Hi, Tim Munker here. And in this video, we're going to talk about setting up Emacs for my front end development course, where I teach HTML, CSS, and JavaScript along with calculus. Uh, you can also use this setup for any type of front end development. So if you found yourself here on this playlist at this video, it'll be good for you as well. First though, if you like videos like this, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. It really helps the channel grow. Okay, let's get to the post. So here I have, uh, I've written a blog post on my 90 style blog experiment. If you've been watching the channel, uh, I've been doing that just to see what kind of traffic I can get. And I also thought it would be good to write posts that go along with this course. So I wrote a post here, and we're gonna follow along with the post and set up Emacs. Now, before we get started, let me tell you, there are two ways to do this. One would be uh, the first way we're gonna do it. And then the second way, I'll show you a GitHub repo where we, one of my GitHub repos, where you can just git clone it and then change it to a .emacs.d uh, directory, and then you're pretty much good to go. But, all right, so uh, at this point, you've installed uh, Linux. If you haven't done that yet, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And um, now we want to bring up our terminal. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to click on the launcher and I'm going to lift this up here and go down to my Linux apps and it'll probably be here. Sometimes it's up here in the top apps here, but you want to look for the terminal. And I'm going to click on the terminal and I'm actually going to right click here and pin it. Uh, I'm going to make this full screen and let's get this nice and large so we can see it. Uh, and we can do that by right clicking, going to the settings and going down to the font size and increasing the font size. Okay. So now we've got our font size pretty big. And what we can do is, well, let's go back to our blog post. So we see that we have to run this command sudo apt install emacs nox because we're just using the terminal version of emacs. Now, if you just type sudo apt install emacs, when you type the emacs command from the command line, it's actually going to open the GUI version. If you do do that, you can open the terminal version with the command emacs space dash nw. Now, that being said, um, if you want to strictly follow along with this course, I'm just using emacs nox So uh, it's up to you. I'm going to install emacs nox Nox. And I'm going to do that with sudo apt install emacs nox Okay. And it's going to run and ask me to take 172 megabytes at the time of this recording of additional space. I'm going to say yes. And it's going to go ahead and install. Now, Emacs has a lot of stuff. That's why it takes 172 megabytes versus uh, some of the smaller text editor programs out there. So that's going to run and install. And while it's doing that, I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back. Okay, and it's fully installed now. I'm going to just type clear to clear this out so we have a fresh screen. And um, now what I'll do is I'm going to read the directions here in this, this post. And I'll include a link to the post in the description below as well so you can check that out. So we're going to go down, scroll down here, and uh, what I want to do is open up Emacs. So let's just do that. We'll type Emacs, and that'll fire up this version here with this start screen here. Now, it doesn't look that great right out of the box, so we're going to make some changes. And the first thing we're going to do is go to Dear Ed. And there's a couple ways we can access Dear Ed. The first one is, and the fastest one, is with Control XD. So Control XD. And then you'll see down here, we have a prompt. I'm just going to hit Enter. And now I can move up and down the directories with N and P. The way you move up and down lines in Emacs in a normal file is Control N and Control P, which will work here as well. But in Dear Ed, you can just use N and P. Uh, the other way to access 
Dear Ed is through Alt X. Now Alt X is a way to you to run commands. So you do Alt X like that, and then I type in Dear Ed, and then it prompts me to that same spot here, and I hit Enter, and I'm in Dear Ed. Okay. So I'm going to go down to this .emacs.d directory, and I'm going to hit Enter. And then I want to create a file and I want to create an init.el file. The command for creating files in Emacs is, uh, is it's called find file. It's control X, control F. So I'm going to do control X, control F. And you'll see I get this prompt where I can now type the name of the file. I'm going to type init.el and hit enter. Okay. Now let's go back to this blog post and look at some of the startup commands that I'm going to put in this. The first one is this set queue byte compile warnings. That's for some of the plugins, just so you don't get an annoying warning when you start it, start it up. It's really not necessary, but I'm gonna include it anyways. And you'll notice I put a little comment here. So I like to comment and say, okay, this is for inhibiting, uh, the CL warning. So I'm going to put that and I'm going to paste this into here. Now to paste it into the terminal version, you're going to do control shift V. If you're using the GUI version, the paste is control Y. Now when you cut stuff within an Emacs file, within the terminal version, you're still going to use control Y, but if you're pasting directly from an outer source into the terminal, you're going to do control shift V. Okay, so you'll see that now we've got um, those two lines in our uh, init.el. Now, right now, this theme isn't looking so good either. So we're going to work on that in a moment. So don't worry. Okay, the next thing, when I start up Emacs, I don't like to have the information screen when I start up. So what I like to do is this next command, which is set Q inhibit slash screen. And you have that T uh, at the end, which is important. Okay. So I'm going to copy this. And again, I'm going to paste it in with control shift V. Now I'm going to move up a line with control P and then hit enter to move down a line and do two semicolons to make a comment and just write that this inhibits the splash screen because I like to comment so I know what's in my file. Okay, let's go back to this blog post and let's take a look at this next thing that I'm gonna wanna do. Now this is the menu bar mode in minus one, which I don't like to have the menu bar mode. Some people like it. If you wanna have the menu bar, that's fine. You can access it with the F10 key, which is on a Chromebook you hit the uh, search key, which is right below the tab. And then the F10 key would be the key on the upper row right below the power button. Um, the 10 keys between the escape key and the power button on the top row are your F1 through F10 keys on your Chromebook. Okay, so just to let you know, I'm going to copy this and paste it in. So I'm going to make a comment first that I am uh, uh, hiding the menu. I'm going to paste it in with control shift V and to save a file, I'm, I'm going to use the Emacs command for saving a file, which is control X, control S. So I'm going to do control X, control S. Now the menu is still here because we haven't evaluated this buffer yet. I can evaluate the buffer by entering a command, so I first have to do Alt X, oops, Alt X. Okay, hold on one sec. Alt X, there we go. I was on the wrong line. And I'm gonna type in uh, eval buffer, eval buffer. And you notice the menu goes away. Well, what if you wanna get the menu back? Well, that's easy enough. We can do Alt X and then toggle menu bar mode. Hit enter and you'll see it comes back. If I wanna access the menu again, I'll use the F10 key and then the arrow keys to move around the menu. 
And if I want to get out, I'll just use the F10 key again. Okay. All right. Uh, so now uh, we talked about that. So the next thing I like is this electric pair mode and set it at one. And basically what that does, I'll show you in a moment. So let's just copy the uh, electric pair mode. And I'll, I'll make a comment and show you what it does. It's basically auto closing brackets. And we'll paste that in, do control X, control S. Um, and then we'll eval the buffer. Okay, and you'll see the menu goes away again. Uh, and now if I hit an opening parentheses, you'll see the closing parentheses as well. Now, if I want to turn that off, because sometimes you want to turn it off, um, I'll do Alt X and then electric pair mode. And you'll see this message electric pair mode disabled. I can turn it back on with just electric pair mode. Okay, I like to have it on by default. That's why I put it in my init.el file. Okay, moving on. So now we want to get some packages. So I'm going to take this line of code, which is going to um, allow us to get some packages. Okay, so I'm going to copy this and we'll paste this in here. And I'll do Control X, Control S. And now I'll do Alt X and eval the buffer. And um, now to update the packages and refresh them, I'm gonna do Alt X and then the command package list packages. And now we're gonna see, uh, it's gonna take a moment. You see it's loading here and we're gonna wait a moment until we get a message that um, the package refresh is done, which we just got. Okay, so now let's install some packages. And these are the core packages I want to install. JS2 mode for JavaScript, Emmet mode for uh, HTML and CSS, Markdown mode, because we will create some worksheets in Markdown and then convert them to HTML. Web mode, which is for HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP. Uh, and prettier, which helps to uh, make your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files formatted, helps to format them nicely. Um, okay, so to install, I'm going to do Alt X and then package install. And we're going to wait a moment. And then I'm going to type in the package I want to install, JS2 mode. It's going to go ahead and compile it and install. And you'll see it's running there in the bottom. And we'll wait till it's done compiling. This, okay, there we go. And now I'm gonna uh, install another package. I can do that with the package install. When I type Alt X, if I've typed a command already, I can do an up arrow to get the command. Uh, so I'm going to do package install again, and then Emmet mode. And you'll see that it's installed Emmet mode, Alt X. We'll do another package install. Let's do markdown mode. We've installed that. Uh, we also have web mode and prettier. So we'll do Alt X. We're going to do web mode. And it's going to install that and then Alt X and we're going to install Prettier. Okay. Now with a note about Prettier, to get this to work, we're going to have to install Node and we'll do that in a moment. Okay. So now, uh, additionally, we may want to install some themes. I've installed these, Adam One Dark, Material, Groovebox, and Dracula. Um, and you can also find popular themes for Emacs following this link from my blog. Again, I'll leave the blog uh, in the description below. So we're going to install Atom, One Dark, Material, Groovebox, I spelled Groovebox wrong, and Dracula. Okay, so let's do package install, Atom, One Dark, theme. And you notice when it puts a space, 
It puts a little hyphen in between the space. It does that as long as there's a completion. So if you mess up, it's going to tell you that you messed up. So I'm going to go ahead and install. Okay, so that one's installed the themes. They install pretty quickly. Package install, material next. Uh, okay, and then we'll do um, Groovebox. The, uh, just Groovebox. No, maybe not. Um, let's do, let's package refresh. Not sure why Groovebox is not installing. Okay, now let's try that again. Groove, groove box. No, nope, no match. Well, it's not, it's not picking it up. So we'll skip that one. Let's do Dracula. Ah, <laughs> I made a mistake. I forgot package install. Okay. Now, if we do groove box, there we go. Okay. Sometimes you make mistakes. It's okay. All right. Um, and then we'll do uh, now Dracula. Okay. All right. So now let's do Control X D and hit Enter, and we'll do G to update Dear Ed. And we see we've got a few things. We've got Alpa autosave list, init.el, and init.el with this little curly thing. That's the swap file as a backup. Okay. So. Now we've uh, installed those packages. I'm going to close out Emacs and then open it back up. So I'm going to do Control X, Control C, and then we'll just open Emacs back up and Control X D, and it didn't evaluate. Hmm, let's check that out. Did it not run? Did not load my init.el. That's interesting. Um, let's do control X D. And I think part of the issue is it created a dot Emacs. So I want to delete that and we'll delete that. So I hover over those just to delete them. I do D and D and then I hit X and I'm going to type yes. Okay. Let's do um, control X, control C to quit. Let's fire back Emacs up again. Okay, now it's evaluating the init.el. Okay, so it wasn't first because it created a .emacs um, directory. So if you have that, you can delete that out. Uh, we're going to do control X D and go back to dear ed and go back to our init.el. Okay, and now what I want to do is I want to load the Atom One Dark theme. So let's copy that and paste that in. And so I'm just going to make a comment. Uh, load load theme. And let's go up here and make a comment. Uh, allow use of package manager. Okay. So now I'm going to do Control X, Control S to save, and then Alt X to eval the buffer. And you'll see the theme changes. It's kind of a nicer uh, theme. That's our Adam One Dark theme. Now, if you want to try different themes, there are themes that come with Emacs. You can do Alt X and then Customize Themes. And you'll see I have a bunch of other themes. So I could try Dracula. Now it's going to prompt me, do I want this to load? Yes, yes. And we change to Dracula. And then if we go back, uh, to our init.el, we notice we have the Dracula theme, which looks pretty cool. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. And you'll see now that we've loaded the themes, it's created some custom code in here. Um, so there is that. Uh, it may even in your, um, it may list the packages sometimes. Uh, it creates some, some code in your init.el. Don't worry about that. Just leave it be. Uh, okay, so next thing, I'm going to require Emmet mode. So that will allow me to quickly be able to turn on Emmet mode in an HTML or CSS buffer. And so we'll just put allow use of Emmet mode in an HTML or CSS buffer. Okay. 
All right. And, um, you know, uh, in this blog post, I explain how you use Emmet mode. So for instance, if I'm in an HTML buffer, I enable Emmet mode, which would be Alt X and then type Emmet mode and hit return. Um, if I type P and then control J, it will expand to an opening and closing paragraph tag. Similarly, if I type dot container and then a right arrow section, another right arrow, then in parentheses H1 plus P with no spaces, then do control J, I'm going to get this line of code. Also, if I just uh, am at the top of an HTML buffer and I type the bang signal or the exclamation point and then control J, it gives me this general framework for an HTML buffer, which is really nice. Okay, after enabling Emmet mode, we have to set up web mode. So I'm actually gonna go right down here and we're gonna copy this big block of code with the comment uh, and just control shift V and paste it, control X, control S. Let's eval the buffer along the way just to make sure that we're not getting any issues. So we'll eval the buffer. Okay, now notice the theme has changed because up above here, we've set it at one dark. If I wanna to change to a different theme, I could do material, or perhaps I want a light theme like material light. I can do control X, control S, alt X, eval the buffer, and you're gonna see that I get this light theme now. Let's go back to one dark. So Adam one dark, control X, control S, alt X, let's eval the buffer. And now we get back to our uh, old theme. Now, if I wanna to move to the end of the file, I can do Alt, Shift, and then the period, which is basically Alt and the right arrow. And if I wanna to move to the top, I can do Alt and Shift and comma, which is basically Alt and the left arrow. So I wanna to move to the bottom, so I'm gonna do Alt, Shift, period. And I'm gonna to move to the bottom, and we're going to put some more stuff in this file. Okay, so after setting up web mode, you can set up the following in your init.el. Um, so we can uh, do this. This is going to give me uh, line numbers and relative line numbers. So I'm gonna do Control C to copy that. And then let's make a comment. This is, this is line numbers and relative line numbers. Okay, and I'm gonna do Control Shift V and paste that in, and then Control X, Control S, Alt X, and then I'll do the up arrow because we've already typed eval buffer, hit enter, and you'll see that these line numbers come on the side here. Now, I'm on the line number 72. This line number is one up, two up, three up, four up, five up. How is that helpful? Well, let's say I wanted to fix this line at line 20. I can move up 20 lines really quick with Control X, Control U and then Control P, which is the up. So Control Control U, 20 Control P. Okay, uh, let's go back down to the bottom with Alt Shift uh, and the arrow. And all right, so now um, what I wanna do is we'll go back to this post here and there's some optional stuff I can do. So if you are interested in writing blog posts in Markdown and you wanna know your word count, you can install uh, WC mode. Um, I like that, so I'm gonna go ahead and Alt X and type package install, and we'll do WC mode, okay? So that's going to install WC mode, and um, now I can put in this word count mode. Uh, and do control shift V to get the word count mode. And then also I included this, um, which gives me a little bit of spacing, I believe, but it's not always working 100% um, around the border. So we'll do control X, control S, uh, alt X, eval the buffer, and you see it didn't change much. So it's not really working that well in this terminal. You can choose to include that or not. Uh, that's pretty much it for setting up my Emacs. So I can quit out, control X, control C, quit out. Um, now, if I list out the files, including the dot files, I see I only have my dot Emacs dot D. If you get a dot Emacs, you probably want to delete that. Um, 
All right, so I'm going to now just type Emacs. It's going to open up and you'll see it starts right up with the scratch buffer with the Atom One Dark theme. You'll see it took a moment and loaded and um, you should be set and ready to go. Now that's one way to do it. Let's talk about the next way to do it, okay? So I'm gonna get out of Emacs here, Control X, Control C, and I'm gonna list out my dot files again, and I'm gonna remove my dot Emacs dot D, okay? Now, if I start Emacs, I start Emacs back with the splash screen and everything, it's back to a basic vanilla Emacs, okay? So I'm gonna do Control X, Control C, and I'm gonna delete the .emacs.d again because even though I deleted it, you'll see it creates it again. So I'm just gonna do rm-rf.emacs.d, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is go to GitHub. And I'm gonna pause the video for a moment and log into my GitHub account. So hold on one sec. Okay, so now I'm in my GitHub account and I'm gonna search through my repositories. Now I'll leave a link to this repository in the description uh, and I'll search for Emacs and I've got this front end course here. Now, also in this blog post, I believe I included it, yeah. So I'm gonna use this command. I could just do use this, git clone and this command, the front end course. So I'm gonna copy this and I make sure my, I'm in my home directory and I'll do control shift V to paste it in. And it's gonna clone that there. And now I wanna move that, well, I'm using move, but I'm basically renaming it to .emacs.d. So let's do that. So I'll do control C and then control shift V. Okay, now let's start Emacs, all right? So now I'm starting Emacs and you'll notice that I've got the one dark theme and I'm in the scratch buffer and um, I've got all that stuff installed. So if I do Control X D and go to Dear Ed, go down to Emacs.D, you'll see that I have Elpa, um, I have some stuff in there, and in Elpa, I have these packages that I've installed. So the Groovebox theme, JS2 mode, Markdown mode, all these are installed just by the Git clone. So I didn't even have to run anything. And if I go into my init.el, you'll see that the init.el is right there. So if you really want the easy method, just run, before you open Emacs the first time, just run the git clone command and then move it. Again, that's in the blog post. I'll leave the description below. Alternatively, you could go to GitHub and go check out my repository and put it in that way. It's just a little bit longer to do it. But either way, this is the quick way of doing it. If you're asking why didn't I show you this quick way from the start, I wanted to go through and explain some of the processes of how I came up with this setup so you'd be a little bit more informed uh, about the setup you're using versus just um, going ahead and um, basically installing someone else's setup without really knowing about it. I hope that's helpful. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. It really does help the channel grow. I'll include a link to my 90s style blog post on this setup in the description below. I'll include also my social links in the description below if you'd like to check those out as well. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day.